This family certainly has been tested to the core, and how they've responded speaks volumes to their faith. My name's Foster Sawyer. There's my brother Tate and Preston. Uh, first of all, who knows what this tournament is called? Does anybody know the name of it? What's the name of this tournament? Uh, uh, Tara Sawyer. Exactly. Uh, well, Tara's our sister. Uh, I'm Foster, like I said. Uh, Tara's our sister. She passed away when she was 10 years old. She was just like y'all. She played second base. Uh, based on prayer with the guys. She was dang good at it too. A good pitcher. Most importantly though, she was a, an amazing person. Sawyer has had to deal with uh, some great tragedy in his life with the, the passing of his sister, uh, his whole family, of course. Um, but with that tragedy uh, comes a resiliency um, to, to battle on and fight through struggles. And obviously um, that trumps any kind of struggle on the football field, but uh, that inner strength uh, has really served him well. We have five children. We had our first four in five and a half years to the day. I know growing up with four people, four siblings all the same age, is very competitive. Everything turned into <laughs> a game or a contest. Um, There's no, oh, we can just do this for fun. It was always, who's gonna be the best at it? Foster was pure passion. <laughs> uh, I, whatever it was, whether he was mad, happy, Whatever, I mean, he, he, he was a very passionate uh, child, in my opinion. Just all, all us all being the same age, we just did everything together. So we were all there playing, like, pick up hockey. And uh, I came around the corner, he had my skates on, and there was Foster out there in the driveway by himself at 18 months, rollerblading, in line rollerblading. I mean, it was unbelievable. Like, that's when I knew, I was like, man, this kid, there's something to it, and that, that coordination to be able to sit there and just maneuver like that. And I can figure it out. I was, what, six years older when I was out there struggling. Foster never was able to really get dominated. That's why, like, <laughs> I mean, especially just being two years older than him, he's always been just a little bit smaller than me, but always a little bit stronger and always a little bit faster, just because, I mean, he's obviously pretty gifted athletically. My oldest son, Preston, was five. And uh, he started wanting to play baseball, so that's kind of the, so that's what we did. When Terry got older, she I guess in the next year or so she started wanting to play, and we just not even asked, we just rolled, enrolled her and started playing, and she started playing with the boys from the very beginning. Both Tate and Tara, um, we were the predators, and they kid quit the day of the game, and my parents called me. My dad said, "Foster, let's go," and so. Um, I just kind of went with it. I didn't know what was going on, so I played outfield, and I just remember backing up first base, and I sprinted every chance I got, and uh, so from there on, I just kept the ball rolling. I always played up, and um, so that's just kind of how it started. Competition-wise, I always held myself to a higher standard. I didn't know much about football. I liked watching it. Uh, I was fourth grade, uh, 10 years old. Uh, my best friend, Patrick Brophy, asked me to come play for a team called the Cougars and uh, Optimus Football in Arlington. Uh, went out and tried out. I didn't even know what position I was gonna play. I didn't even, honestly didn't know very many positions. It was probably, I don't know, the third week or so of practice, and it was on a Saturday. And uh, this gentleman was there watching, and uh, he got started getting excited. He was watching uh, the practice and everything. So we're going, who's that kid, who's that kid? And uh, we figured out he's talking about Foster. He said, uh, we'll see him playing on Saturdays because I've been around this for over 25 years. I used to coach it and I watch it and I've never seen anything like that. I thought it was just being nice, you know. You know, like I said, Terry played a lot of baseball and everything. We just finished up a World Series and uh, I think there was something like 87 teams there. And uh, we were, Terry was on the team and she was the only girl there. We came in fifth. Uh, and she was that competitive, uh, you know, to play at that level. And uh, so after that tournament, we, you know, we're, our summer had 
baseball if you please. Tara was the one, in fact, that said, get me to the lake. Mm -hmm. I I'm ready to go. I'm done with baseball. I'm ready to go to the lake. And that was, um, besides being home with her brothers, that was her most favorite place in the world to be, was at the lake. We had had a magical week of snow cones and game playing and uh, really, really fun stuff. And um, then she just had a headache one morning. Two days later, she was in a coma and um, fighting for her life. In the course of that week, she contracted a water amoeba called Nigleria. It's pretty fatal. It is fatal. And um, if you don't catch it in time, it'll, it'll take your life. And that's what it would tear. There's a whirlwind and it happened so fast. That's just really amazing. I remember um, immediately following just those days at the hospital and then how it was so surreal after it happened. Having young children that were grieving so severely, um, we talked a lot about how are we going to write this script for them because they're looking to us for what to do with this pain. Some friends of ours came alongside us and helped us and uh, came up with the idea of doing a tournament. And so that's how we started the Terra Sawyer uh, Classic. And we wanted to do it with a lot of reasons. We, first of all, we wanted uh, to honor God and, and uh, you know, remember Terra. At the time, it was probably around eight to 12 teams. And each year, it just kept growing and growing. And then, you know, this past year, I believe we had 480-something teams. One thing that made TCU so good uh, in 2008, 2009, 2010 was quarterback Andy Dalton's leadership abilities. He was in a, a, another coach on the field for the team and the, the, the coaches by his junior and senior year uh, had complete trust in him and, and he acted as a coach on the field and his teammates uh, looked up to him. A quarterback needs to be that kind of leader and, and from what I've heard Foster Sawyer is that kind of guy. When we go in our fast tempo series, he calls the plays. So through our first six ball games, he's probably called 30 to 45 percent of the plays on Friday night. I've never done that before. And his work ethic, his character, what he stands for, um, is so much more than football. You know, he's he's not defined by football, even though I think at this point in his life, that's pretty much a driving force. He's got all the intangibles. He's got he's got everything that you look for. If he's developed properly, I have no doubt that this is a young man, God willing, stays healthy, will have a chance to play beyond college. I remember going and seeing her last, uh, last time I ever saw her, saying goodbye, kiss her on the cheek. I can still smell, um, every time I walk in the hospital, Cook's hospital, I still smell everything like it, like it was yesterday. My bones ache every time I uh, sense that, and um, and I, I still remember just clips of just uh, walking out, uh, sitting in the hallway, just, just knowing that I'd never see her again. And uh, though it's tough, I just I just um, something that I always stick with me and make me stronger. I know because um, true character is expressed with through pain. Uh, anyone can get through anything when it's easy. It's, uh, it's harder when it's tough. So uh, I know God's put me in a situation to make me a stronger person. That relationship was very, very special to him. Yeah. And um, she, she mothered him. him. She yeah. took care of him. And she knew how to deal with him. And she passion. kept him in line. You never know when your time's called. And, uh, but you just got to live every day like it's your last. And that's just something that I got to. We're all guilty of having bad days and feeling sorry for ourselves. But it's those uh, 6 a.m. workouts, you gotta feel like, you know, at least I get to wake up at 6 o'clock and go work out and uh, get to be with people that I love and care for and uh, make a difference somehow today. So.
Mrs. Pepper Mason, you stand.